So now um, I want to look a little bit at um, the fiscal policy types. And there's kind of two distinguishing ways that we're going to think about um, these policies. So expansionary policy basically means taxing less or spending more. In order to, so why are you spending, taxing less or spending more? You're doing that to grow the economy. On the other side, contractionary fiscal policy And I'm sorry here, I should have added, this is expansionary fiscal policy. This would mean taxing more or spending less in order to shrink the economy. Now, why would you do that? You would do that primarily because you want to um, basically, um, you know, an economy is doing too well and you want to kind of cool it down a little bit. How does it do this? Remember, taxes, as they go down, then presumably your income can go up and your investment can go up. Also, if government spending goes up, what does that mean? Well, that's essentially G going up. Remember, these are all components of GDP, which equals C plus I plus G plus NX. On the other side of this, when we're talking about contractionary fiscal policy, if taxes go up, then consumption falls and investment falls. And if spending falls, then essentially G is falling, which again, as part of our GDP, our GDP would be falling, whereas this one is rising. Now, again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to kind of micromanage the economy to get a certain outcome. Now, the way that this all starts to look is with an overall economy that looks like this where we have my real GDP here and my price level here. We have a downward sloping, what's called a aggregate demand curve. And we have what's called a SRAS curve, which is my short run aggregate supply. And that's going to be different than what's called my long-run aggregate supply, which is where my economy is at in the um, where my economy is at in the long run. So now here, I look like I am in overall equilibrium. But what we're essentially saying here is that what if I drew my graph like this? This is what's called a recessionary gap. It's called a recessionary gap because my short run equilibrium is to the left of the long run. What would you want to do? You'd want to engage in expansionary fiscal policy. Alternatively, you could engage in expansionary monetary policy as well if you refer back to the previous chapter. But the idea here is that you're then going to shift out the aggregate demand curve, which equals basically my GDP, which is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX, because now GDP is higher. So we'll call that GDP prime, which is higher because my consumption is now higher. We'll call that C prime plus I prime because this is higher. Or alternatively, my government spending is higher. And now I've moved my economy to the long run. 
Alternatively, my economy could be doing too well. And so now I would want to engage in contractionary fiscal policy, which means I want to lower my aggregate demand. And I would do that until I get to right here. And basically I would cool down my economy. This is what's known as an inflationary gap. It's called an inflationary gap because if you don't do anything, the economy will move on its own to much higher prices. So you, if you, the reason why you want to cool down an overheated economy is an attempt to um, control inflation. Now, this leads to the question of how do you do this? How do you engage in expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy? Let's write that out. How do you do it? How do you engage in this kind of policy? Well, the one thing you can do is actually do nothing. There's a lot of things that are actually automatic within the um, um, government where spending goes down when the economy is doing well because, quite frankly, fewer people need... Um, Right? Fewer people need um, food stamps. Fewer people might need unemployment insurance. Um, and also, they're taxing more because more people are working. So the tax system, let's call it the welfare system, many of those things are automatic. They change already. They collect more money or less money or spend more money um, or spend less money based on how the economy is doing. Occasionally, though, you do need discretionary policy, and that means taking specific action. So that would you don't typically do that unless the event happening is really, really bad. So the last time we kind of used these things was during the Obama administration, and we did that because the economy was doing so poorly. Um, we don't tend to want to rely on... Um, discretionary policy, but we'll talk about why that's the case in the next video.